Hello citizens! In this video I would like to take a look at the controversial Cutlass Steel and how it compares to other dropships in Star Citizen. As always, if you liked the video, sacrifice a like to the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more. So let's start with the basics. What is the Cutlass Steel and how is it different from other Cutlass variants? The Steel is a dropship variant of the Cutlass. It features 18 jump seats and 5 door guns and an additional remote turret above the rear ramp. The jump seats take up the entire cargo hold of the ship and each features a rack for a single weapon. The door guns offer good coverage on the sides, however the rear door gun seems a bit impractical as it can only cover a narrow area compared to the top mounted remote turret and any troops trying to enter or leave the ship will be blocking the view as well. Along with this, the rear door gun makes it impossible to load at least the hover bike into the ship. All door guns come with enough ammunition for about 2 minutes of sustained fire which is pretty good. However, these weapons cannot be swapped at the moment which is a major drawback. The remote turret is controlled from the co-pilot seat and it features dual size two repeaters with a wide range of motion, making it a powerful defensive and suppression weapon. And that is where all differences end. The steel features the same component layout as the black with only a single size two shield. This is enough to provide protection from small arms fire but not really enough to protect the ship from ground defenses or heavy weapons. The steel features no additional armor or any other facilities that would make it stand out. So how does it compare to other dropships? Compared to the Valkyrie, the steel features almost the same number of jump seats and it is more agile. However, the Valkyrie features more shields, more armor, more turrets and can carry vehicles along with troops. We don't know the details of the in-game price for the Cutlass Steel, but I think we can reasonably expect it to cost around 2 million Alpha UEC compared to the 4 million Alpha UEC for the Valkyrie. Compared to the Hoplite, the Steel has more seats and more guns. However, the Hoplite is more agile and has more shields and armor. Ultimately, the choice of dropship depends on the situation. The Hoplite is great for boarding actions and quick insertions under fire. While the Valkyrie is a bit cumbersome for boarding actions but is perfect for inserting units and vehicles into a combat zone and it can handle some anti-aircraft defenses on its own. The Steel stands somewhere in the middle. It is small enough to carry out a boarding action and it does have enough firepower to support an assault. But it lacks the shields and armor to withstand a lot of fire. So should you buy it? No. The price tag of $235 is completely unreasonable for a ship that has very little to offer above the other Cutlass variants. On the other hand, if you're someone who has a lot of friends with guns and have some fighters to take out the turrets, the steel might be the perfect low-cost transport solution for you. If that sounds like you and you don't already own a Valkyrie, you should consider buying the steel in-game once it becomes available. In conclusion, the Cutlass Steel is a good ship and a ship we were missing. It can serve as both an accessible dropship as well as a low-cost personal transit ship for medium distances. However, the price tag CAG put on it at release is just completely out of touch with reality. If the steel had been in the same price range as the other variants, I think the backers would be a lot less angry. What concerns me is that I am starting to see a pattern of CAG releasing low-effort ships whenever the patch they are releasing is small or missing features in an attempt to pad the release. With that being said, that's it for tonight. What do you think? Do you like the Cutlass Steel? Does it have a place in the verse? Let me know in the comments, fly safe and I will see you in the verse.